We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Oh, New York City, known as the Big Apple, the land of the dream, and the center of the universe, and the city that never sleeps. But what happens when you decide to move back to NYC and it's forced to sleep for the first time in history due to a worldwide pandemic? I'm Ashley Perkins, AKA Southern Belle in the City, and I'm here to share my experience of what's it like to live in NYC during a pandemic. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Ashley Perkins, AKA Southern Belt in the city. And I am here to share my experience of what it was like to move back to NYC during the coronavirus. Yes, y'all, the corona. So let me explain a little bit to you guys. It took some blood, sweat, and tears to get my butt back in New York City. So when, let me tell you when I was shook, when the pandemic decided it wanted to happen right when I moved there, right when I moved there. Okay, let me give you a little backstory, right? So I've actually lived in New York City before in the past. I went to college here in New York for five and a half years. I studied acting and singing and dancing. My major is musical theater and I came to the Big Apple to be on Broadway. Awesome, went great, I loved it, right? Moved back home to Texas for three years because I need to go back to my roots, you know, it just be like that sometimes. And I missed the apple. I had to come back, right? So your girl was smart about it, right? I got me a cute little job at a chiropractor office and I worked as a receptionist. I worked that for six months and then I moved to New York City in March, right? The second week of March, right? The first week I moved in, got my keys, got a cute little apartment with a brick wall, just what I was looking for in Brooklyn and bed -Stuy. And I got my keys, right? The second week, my boss calls me and tells me, we're gonna have to close the office. I need for you to cancel all appointments in the next month. Cancel all of them, y'all. So I'm sitting here thinking, okay, well, am I still coming in? Am I still gonna be working my job? What is going on? Cancel all appointments. He told me I'm gonna have to close the office and you're gonna have to file for unemployment. Look at my face. You mean to tell me I finally moved back to New York City and the second week I moved here, I lose my job and I have to file for unemployment because of a pandemic immediately. Got on the unemployment, which by the way, took forever. The whole website was crashed. So many people in New York City was trying to file for unemployment. That website was crashed and you couldn't even get onto the website. Performer Marty Gold Cummings tried bypassing the phone by filling out an application on the state website. It was like crash, 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 refresh, 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 refresh. I finally got through and I filled it out and said, oh yeah. I couldn't get on the website for maybe about three or four days, I want to say. Finally, I was able to get on the website, do my um, application, finish it and everything. And then I just had to wait. Just a waiting game, right? So here I am stressed out, sitting here, watching the news on a daily basis, worried about, I'm on unemployment. When is my unemployment gonna come? How the heck am I gonna pay my rent this month and the next month and the month after that? How the heck am I gonna go buy groceries? What the heck am I gonna do, right? days turns into weeks and then a week turned into a month you guys so march had went by and we're here we are halfway um in april and i still don't have my unemployment so i'm getting real pressed y'all i'm getting real pressed so i call my friends asking them yo what's up have you got your unemployment has your application been processed they all told me no so here i am watching on the news nobody in new york city has their unemployment none of us None of us could get unemployment. The NYC labor was so backed up with people requesting for unemployment. They couldn't give nobody it. So anytime you would try to call the phone line, right? The line would be busy. You want to that sound is all too familiar to New Yorkers trying to file for unemployment insurance right now. I call every single day. I you couldn't get anyone online. I would call all day. There was a day that I'm pretty sure I called 72 times. 72. 72 times 
and I still do. Thousands of New Yorkers are sharing similar frustrations online, posting their logs of countless calls to the Labor Department. All busy tones, all different times and different hours of the day. So finally, they changed it. And so then after a week or so, when you would call the system, it would say, if you have not filed for unemployment, go online, do the application. Once that is done, we will contact you on the phone. No need to call us, we'll call you. I know y'all see my face. So it's been pretty much a month and a half. I don't have any money. I have no unemployment. I'm not working. And the unemployment is still backed up. Nobody in New York is getting their um, unemployment. Let alone we're seeing on the news the number of corona cases increasing, increasing, increasing on a daily basis and people are dying. Number two. We don't have our jobs, okay? Now let me explain to you why this also is a bad thing, okay? Many of us get our health insurance in America from our jobs because health insurance alone is just so darn expensive. So we get our health insurance from our jobs, right? Our jobs are closed and canceled, which means we're not getting that insurance. Now, of course, we have the very fortunate people who are able to work at home, but people like me who work at a chiropractor office, I can't work at home. There's nothing for me to do. At There's no job for me unless I have patients coming into the office. So I don't have insurance. My job is canceled, right? So here we are running into the runt of if I were to catch coronavirus and I were to catch this disease or whatever, this pandemic or whatever, and go in the hospital, test positive, when it's time for me to receive my treatment, I can't afford it because I don't have insurance. So many people are experiencing this. And don't forget, we're unemployed, so we don't have money. So not only do we not have money to buy groceries and to pay our rent, our landlords are harassing us to pay rent, even though we don't have no money, we don't have health insurance. So you guys gotta think about it. We got people here, families who can't feed their families and can't buy groceries because they don't have unemployment because our unemployment is so backed up. Let alone we're also worried about when we do go to the grocery store, Am I going to catch the coronavirus because it's so bad here? Not to mention, we don't have enough essential workers. Not to mention, not only do we not have enough essential workers, we don't have enough space in our hospitals. Right. So it's getting to the point that we have to build tents in Central Park to make more space for people with the coronavirus. When, you, when I tell you guys that I have been stressed out, I have been absolutely stressed out. I have never been under this type of mental strain. My mental healthness has... My mental health has never been under this type of strain ever before in my entire life. I mean, I'm dealing with life and death things on a daily basis. I'm worried about if I go to the supermarket, am I going to catch coronavirus? If I do get coronavirus, I can't afford to pay for treatment to get the proper care that I need. Let alone, even if I am admitted to the hospital, I got to be in a freaking tent outside in Central Park because there's not enough space for me in the hospital. So these are all the things that are accumulating in my mind on a daily basis. And I'm sitting in a house every day in four walls, looking at four walls all day, every day. So you guys have to understand how vexed my spirit was when I saw President Trump talking about, you know, America, I think it's time for us to open the country back up. Or how vexed my spirit was when I was seeing states like uh, Florida opening their beaches back up and Atlanta, Atlanta open, talking about opening back up. I mean... My spirit was super, super vexed because here we are in New York City, the worst city in the whole world right now, guys. The whole world right now. We have so many people who are dying in the hospital right now that they have loads of freezer trucks across the street from the hospital just holding dead bodies. Holding dead bodies. Now, you guys have to understand there's all... Bodies, body, body. There's a truck that's going to put bodies in there. This is full of bodies. It's like a load. An area in Long Island City of so many dead bodies that are um, unaccounted for that they just have to bury. I mean, like 50 to 70 bodies that they're just burying in Long Island City for unaccounted bodies, you know? And here I am having to worry about this every day. So you have to understand how vexed my spirit was to see people complaining and protesting at City Hall, talking about let's open America back up again. And you guys are not living in the state that New York City is in at all. And when you go on the streets, the streets are completely empty. Now, you guys, this is a very historic thing. We've got places that are super iconic like Times Square, 34th Penn Station, 
uh, the Statue of Liberty, Central Park, completely empty, you guys. Ghost town. I mean, absolutely ghost town. When you go out in the city of New York, it is so quiet. So to be in this pandemic, it's a very self-reflecting time, guys, because when you go outside to hear New York City sleeping, and it's very symbolic because you can just feel the energy of death in the air. You're thinking about this every day. Am I going to die? People are dying every day. No one's outside. Super apocalyptic. You know, I mean, it's a lot to deal with. It is a lot to think about. And it's so symbolic because the city that never sleep is finally sleeping. And what's making it sleep is death. We're stuck and staying in because people are dying. So I just want to take the time to give food for thought for people out there. This is my message of this whole video. When you're complaining and talking about you're ready to get your nails done, you're ready to go out to the bar, you're ready to go out to the club, all these things that you want to do um, and you don't want to wait, you just want to then to reopen the city. I want you guys to think about all the things that I'm just sitting here telling you guys right now um that i'm experiencing the two decisions i have to make on a daily basis do i want them to open the city back up and i go back to work and i risk my health um catching corona and then not being able to receive the proper treatment that i need or to be able to be treated in the proper hospital like i should and risk dying or do i make the decision i don't have enough money to buy groceries i don't have enough money to pay my rent I don't have enough money to live life. These are the two decisions that us New Yorkers have to make on a daily basis. So when you're sitting here talking about, I'm ready to go out to the club, I'm ready to go out drinking, I'm ready to, for the city to open back up so I can go shop and get my nails done. I want you to think about these decisions that we New Yorkers have to make on a daily basis um, about this pandemic. Now, when it comes to our president, I don't want to get too political about this topic, um, but one thing that I can say when it comes to reopening, I respect Trump as a businessman. I think Trump was an amazing businessman before he became president. Um, he has the Trump Towers. He did what he needed to do to get where he needed to, to build the image that he has. And I respected Trump as a businessman. But when he became president, he began to run America like a business. And that's what he's doing right now. He's worried about the economy um, of our country instead of the actual health of our people. We're not receiving um, the proper materials in New York City to, to care for our people. Um, send more essential workers here to get us more help here in our city so that we can get help and get better and then if we get better maybe the whole country can get better you know what i'm saying you know and so this is just food for thought and i just want you guys to consider these things um when you're talking about opening the country back up and getting things back to normal i want you to consider the state that we're in new york city and the things that we are experiencing and um the decisions that we have to make just to go to the grocery store um and just to live here um, it is officially, uh, May, um, three months now, um, and I still don't have unemployment, um, and many of my friends don't either. Um, so I just want you guys to think, um, really second guess before you speak and think about how some of us are not as fortunate, um, as you guys are. Some of you guys are chilling and some of us are not, um, Anyway, thank you so much, guys, uh, for listening. Um, I hope I was able to uh, touch your hearts and really get, open your eyes to what's really going on in cities that are deeply affected by this coronavirus. Um, and yeah, um, on a lighter note, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, by the way, uh, I am making plans to fly back home to Texas. Um, I think um, New York has been a lot um, for me, uh, mental health wise, and I think it would be really good for me to be back around family. Um, so I'll be flying back home to Texas. If you guys want me to post a vlog and share with you guys what's it like to fly um, during a pandemic in the United States, I'll be more than happy to do that. Comment down below if you want that to be my next video. But anyway, thank you so much guys for watching. Please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Like my video. Show me some love. 
comment tell me everything that you think about i will definitely do my best to respond i would love to know what you guys think about um in my experience in new york anyway thank you so much for watching this is ashley perkins aka southern bell in the city and you guys be blessed